Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chris and I'd like to welcome you to another conversation about your Kundalini Awakening um, experience. And so welcome to this program. Uh, today I'm joined by Rosemary. And uh, because Amelia is having uh, some extraordinary weather in her country of Ireland, uh, she may or may not be able to join us. So uh, I'm just going to continue, you know, with this conversation. If she jumps in, excellent. If not, well, we'll, we'll hope that she did not get washed away. Uh, I would like to to say thank you to Amelia and her husband John uh, for sponsoring this program and allowing this program to exist so that this information can be given to you. Now, I don't have a view of the chat room, so I won't have access to any of the questions. So if there is anybody in the chat room right now and you want to call in with a question, please call this number, United States Area Code 347 934 Zero zero two six, three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. I'll repeat that uh, later on in the program. Um, and so let's let's begin. It's a big topic: food and the Kundalini. Now, of course, you may be thinking of this as a dietary program, and part of it, yeah, part of it is of a of a dietary nature. But there's also other natures that have to do with the food that we eat and the the mingling of those energies uh, with the kundalini. As I've mentioned in other programs, what we want to do is we want to uh, allow the kundalini in us to choose the food that we eat. But sometimes that, that communication may not be as clear as we'd like it to be. And so we the, the kundalini will leave it up to your discernment to eat the foods that are most appropriate for you okay now there is a doctrine of signature a doctrine of signature is basically a, a a descriptive method of uh non-linear communication i guess is the best way i can put it at the moment so for instance an orange well an orange is the color orange, but it's also that very nutritious fruit, that citrus fruit that we eat. Uh, but the orange being the color orange, also being the color of the second chakra, has that doctrine of signature. So uh, if you look at the qualities of the orange and the qualities of how we interact with the citric acid, the vi- you know, which is the vitamin C, and and the uh, prana that's uh, affixed to the orange, and you, and you look at the fact that it's you know blooming, and or it's 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 a uh, harvested in the winter time when many other fruits are not available. Uh, this is a doctrine of signature, the signature of interact with that food uh, and how it comes to us, and and the color of it, the shape of it, the design of it, uh, you know how the she, you know, comes out in these little uh, self, uh, you know, the little slices of, of the orange that if you peel it, you'll get it that way. Um, this all adds up to a doctrine of signature. And so that's something that I will be bringing up. So, for instance, the same thing with the tomato. You know, it's red and it's and it, uh, it, it grows on the earth. It, it literally almost grows on the earth. It, if I, when I was uh, younger, you know, I was a farmer for about 14 years, and uh, we would grow tomatoes commercially, and uh, you know, the tomatoes, you know, they they blossom, you know, they get the little flower, and then uh, the actual fruit starts to develop from that flower, and that that fruit is very on the ground, but it starts out green. So in a in a in the leg doctrine of signature, it starts out with love through that love if you look at the color of it the green through that love it evolves into the red tomato that we that, that many of us love to to partake of and that would be a a doctrine of signature for the first chakra and if you you know the same with the banana and the third chakra the same with 
with, say, broccoli in the fourth chakra, the same with blueberries or conquered grapes or blackberries or mulberries or, you know, any of the, uh, of the, of the darker blue to purple color uh, fruits or vegetables that are associated with the fifth chakra and so on and so forth. You won't have a lot of fruits that are, that are, uh, that have a doctrine of signature with the sixth and the seventh chakra. So, uh, with a lot of this, it'll just be, uh, one through five. Okay. Now I've mentioned a few already. I've mentioned, you know, just in, in addition, you know, with, with the con- conjunction to the chakras. But that's not all there is to it. Okay. There are many, many, many other aspects of the foods that we eat. I will. I will suggest that you allow the kundalini to pick your... One thing that I will suggest that you do is to not mix your meats and your starches. Have those in two separate meals. Your vegetables and your fruits and your breads and even your, 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 your sugary, sweetie things. Let that be completely separate from your densely packed protein uh, foods, such as meats. And, uh, you know, you can have them. You, know, you can have the meat as much as you want. You can have uh, chicken, turkey, beef, fish. Uh, I, will, I will never, ever suggest that you have pork. Okay. And, and there, are many, there are many other reasons uh, about the pork. The pork is is so genetically cl- close to human flesh um, and then and then there are levels of parasites that that can be found in in pork meats and then if you look at certainly here in the United States at the pork industry and and how that is run and the absolutely insane level of of pain and fear and hurt and and levels of of I'm trying. <laughs> the words fail me at the moment. <laughs> the 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 amount of of, of uh, hurt that is put into that meat as it is processed for human consumption. I will never ever suggest pork be a part of anyone's diet. Um, so I know, I know. You know, we're we're a, here in the states. We're a country that is. That is constantly barraged by the commercial industries to to eat bacon, bacon this, bacon that, ham this, ham that, uh, and and yes, I am actually saying never ever eat that. Okay, but you will do you will do what you wish to do. But these are these are the suggestions that I am making for you with regards to your food. Um, beef is fine if you can get it organic. Turkey is fine if you can get it organic. Chicken is fine if you can get it organic. Fish is fine if you can get it wild without farming. I never will recommend farmed fish of any species. Only because uh, the little cage that they grow them in uh, is is really, it's, it's an inappropriate uh, and, and really it, it takes me right back to, to how the pigs are raised. Uh, and how many of the chickens also are raised, but uh, I, my kundalini has not advised people not to eat the chicken. But if you can find the chicken, organic, free range, uh, you know, not painfully dispatched into the next world, then I, then then you can go there. Uh, with regards to the jerkies, jerkies are dried meats. Uh, I would also stay away from the uh, sodium nitrate that are used to cure many of these meats. And um, so so there you have it with with regards to the meats. Um, and I see uh, someone is joining me um, at the 520, and hello to you. And I welcome any of you to call in at 347-934-0026. regards to the vegetables, let's just go ahead and get into that. Uh, carrots. Organic everything, everything that I suggest to you, if you can get it, uh, just understand. I'm talking about organic fruits and vegetables. I am not talking about commercially farm farmed uh, tomatoes or carrots. I used to farm the 
as I mentioned uh, before, weed farm, we uh, grew tomatoes, wheat, corn, rice, beets, beans, uh, and you know, vegetables of that nature. And I cannot begin to tell you the amount of pesticides and fertilizers that we poured over those thousands of acres. Okay. And this was before we all knew about talk operations such as Monsanto. But, you know, this is, you know, this is how it was back in the, the late 60s, early 70s. Um, the farming community didn't really know about the hazardous effects of, of the, uh, of the pesticides until we had the, uh, the crisis in California with the Mayfly and, and then, uh, you know, the then Governor Jerry Brown decided to spray the cities with malathion and parathion and all these things. And, and that's when everybody kind of woke up to, hey, 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 what's going on here? Okay. Uh, so within a kundalini context, everything I mentioned to you will be organic, pesticide, and fertilizer free. And if it's of a meat or the quality of a living being that is giving its life, uh, that, that it may join with you in your kundalini process, well then once again, uh, it needs to be organic, it needs to be free range, and it needs to be treated in, in very good conditions. As much as you can possibly get this and as much as you can possibly research this, I would recommend that you do so because this is what's going into your body and this is what is beginning to support your energetic anatomy. And so as I speak to you on the radio about this, I want you to understand that you are what you eat in an energetic anatomy uh, context. Remember that. Remember that. Uh, be thankful for the food that you have. Actively put your hands over that food or put your eyes over that food and say to yourself, thank you. Thank you. And if it's of a certain animal, say thank you. If it's a cow, if it's a chicken, if it's a turkey, if it's a fish, if it's something like that, just say thank you to that that beautiful creature that has given itself so that it it may join with you and your community as you begin to build your energetic anatomy towards kundalini awakening. Uh, butter and dairy is fine, as once again, as long as it's organic. Uh, butter you can you can mix with the meat. You can have you know butter with uh, with the meat dish. You can also have dark dark bread, such as like a very dark rye, uh, uh, with the meat dishes. But for the most part, you want to keep. Uh, any and all uh, carbohydrates and and uh, and uh, sugars separate from the densely packed proteins. Um, I'm going to ask Rosemary here. Rosemary, are you asking questions? Are you writing down questions? <laughs> no. Okay. Rose Rosemary is a very profuse note taker, and uh, and I think that has served her well. So so we'll continue. So we have the carrots, we have the tomatoes, we have the the many different uh, varieties of lettuce. Uh, these are all good. You know, definitely consume them. If you have any doubt about about your uh, Kundalini instructing you on what you need to do in order to to eat food that supports your Kundalini energetic anatomy, uh, then go with these these brief guidelines. Uh, eat of the red fruits and vegetables this would be cherries this would be uh, uh, apples like a red delicious apple this would be uh, strawberries raspberries uh, even cranberries that are red uh, there are some red grapes out there um, radishes are this way as well uh, look for the red fruits and vegetables and consciously know that you're, con you're consuming this as a gift to the first chakra. And do this with each of the first five chakras. So you would go from the red to the orange fruits and vegetables. You have bell peppers that are orange. You have carrots that are orange. You have oranges that are orange. Uh, you know, all of the different fruits and vegetables that are orange. Quinces are orange. Uh, tangerines are orange. Um, you know, many, many different fruits and vegetables that are orange. Not quite so many as are, as are red or green, though. The orange ones, you, you're gonna have to look for a little bit harder, 
uh, and, and definitely consume them for the second chakra. The third chakra would be, of course, you know, the first thing you're going to think of with yellow is bananas. Uh, and so eat those organic bananas and give that gift of sustenance, conscious, consciously give that gift of sustenance to that third chakra. And then with the, uh, with the yellow, with the yellow fruit, you can also go with with some of the more yellow uh, uh, fruits, wherever you can find them, make sure they're organic. I noticed that some of the fruits that I that I partook of in the Amazon, you know, were, were a very distinct yellow, and that's beside the bananas. I think there was one. There's a cacao uh, outside covering of the cacao was was yellow, and that was quite tasty. And uh, some of them I can't even pronounce because uh, they're they're somewhat strange in, in their appearance and their and and the word itself. But uh, there are yellow uh, fruits that you can put in. So so partake of them. Partake of them. And and also with the green, you know, the green I too many to list. Here's something that isn't isn't commonly discussed is all Kundalini activations start at the heart. It's like a big check mark. All kundalini activations and, and awakenings start at the heart and then ricochet down to the first. Okay? So you'll feel, you'll feel the stimulation of love and that love will stimulate the first and it'll almost happen so simultaneously that you'll just, you'll kind of go with what is the most powerful feeling of the moment and after the first is stimulated, wow! You know, then, then it's going to be a very powerful feeling at the base of your spine. And, uh, and, and most people will begin to, to suspect that, ah, well, it's the, it's the base of the spine that's first and, and, and all. But it isn't. It is divine love that allows a person to have the Kundalini in the first place. And that love is always at the heart. And you have to remember that you have close to around 17 trillion potential hearts in your typical human body. Think about that. 17 trillion. More cells that, that have the ability in your body to, com- to make a complete human being exist in your one body than there are people on this world. Think about that. And then go, you know, 17 trillion times, say, 8 billion people. You can kind of get an idea of the potential uh, for divine love to be to be expressed on this world, it's a huge potential. It's just not being utilized because people don't understand that it is to be utilized. Uh, so yeah, many many you know from the kiwi fruit of New Zealand to to celery to lettuces to the dark green leafy uh, uh, vegetables such as Swiss chard or kale. These are all good. Keep keep them coming to the heart. Make sure they're organic. Make sure you. If they're not organic, then grow it yourself. Okay. Uh, limes, you know, that beautiful lime green color, those are also good for the heart. Well, remember, at this point, I'm just talking about the doctrine of signature. And in this case, it's the color. The color. We're, we're not even going into the nutrients yet. Okay. Um, and, and you'll, you'll find, You'll, you'll you'll be able to put together a a, uh, a a diet that consists of things that will actively a- assist each of the of the first five chakras. Once you have found these, and, and I mentioned earlier uh, about the fifth chakra, the blackberries, blueberries, boysenberries, ras or not uh, any of the dark purple conquered grapes, things of that nature. The green grapes, of course, would go with the fourth chakra. And so on and so on and so forth. Now, as you do this, I'm going to ask you to cut your portions in half. I do not want you spending so much time filling yourself at, at the table. Cut your portions in half and chew them. Uh, chew them until it, it turns into a liquid in your mouth. It's, let the mouth begin the digestion process. You know, chew them very, very, very well. Then swallow them. And as you chew more, 
you will find that you need to eat less. As you chew more, you will need to eat less because uh, the body will often recognize the amount of chewing as as a as a form of satisfaction and and you can decrease the amount of foods that you eat and still have satisfaction of eating foods if you chew it very very well uh, i'm not saying that you sit there and you count 32 times you know while you masticate your food but i am suggesting that you chew it until it turns into a liquid in your mouth and then you swallow it and as you're eating fruits and vegetables they already contain a lot of moisture in them anyway and so you know it will turn to a fluid in your mouth and then you swallow it and then uh, your body is able to partake of the nutrients that are encased in those foods in a, in a much better much better fashion and this and this is also with the meats that you're eating because the, you know the fruits the meat won't have a lot of water unless it's prepared as uh, those those juices come forward through the meats and so once again i want you to chew that food very 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 well and i know I know you hear this. This is very easy stuff. You know, this is stuff you get in third grade. Oh, chew your food until it turns to a flu. Then it'll be good for you. And But these are some of the basic things that we hurry through our 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 lives. Uh, you know, sometimes we get basics. And this is a program about remembering some of the basics that will support your kundalini flow in that energetic thing that it will form within you. So as you as you as you lower the amount of food that you're eating and you separate out the dense compact proteins from the the uh, plants and vegetables that you're eating, things will begin to change for you in a good way. Now I understand that. Not everybody in your family is going to be very uh, supportive, shall we say, of, of these of these dietary uh, suggestions that I'm making, and they don't have to eat that way. They don't. But for those of you that have the Kundalini or are aspiring to have the Kundalini, well, then uh, I will suggest that you that you eat these ways. I eat these ways. Okay, I mean, I don't eat a lot of meat anyway, but when I do, uh, typically it's just that one piece. So if you have any questions about this and, um, and or, or about any other part of your Kundalini Awakening experience, uh, feel free to call 347-934-0024. Nine three four zero zero two six, and uh, and I will I will I will work the switchboard today. Okay, now let's let's migrate away from the color of the of the food. Uh, that's an important doctrine of signature: the color of the food. Uh, let's go in more towards what foods are most appropriate for the Kundalini awakening person. Well, as as I've mentioned in other programs, watermelon is a very, very big, important fruit. And yes, I know it's not available all throughout the year, but for those of you who do have it available to you, uh, consume the watermelon as soon as you begin experiencing Kundalini awakening sy symptoms. What happens is as the kundalini will rise from the base chakra up, uh, it will eventually uh, get to the first and between the first and second chakra, uh, the kidneys will be consumed by the energy. I mean, and, and literally, the kidneys themselves will begin to expand. Watermelon will help you remain calm while this occurs, the situation is, is as the kidneys expand, well, so the, do the functions of the kidneys expand. And yet also those organs that are sitting on top of the kidneys, the adrenal glands, also will expand. And they will also expand the amount of uh, fight or flee hormone that they, that they, that they do. 
And this can cause you to feel very, very, very anxious and fearful or impatient or annoyed or any of the qualities of of, uh, of anxiety uh, that can come to you as your as your kidneys are expanding. It's, the watermelon can really help you uh, find balance within this aspect of the awakening. So do partake copiously of the watermelon. Partake copiously of it, especially in the morning. I will suggest that you have one slice every day. Every day of watermelon. Now let me let me go ahead and check. I have a caller, so just a moment, please. And we're back on the air, and and that's one of our uh, one of our very 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 uh, treasured uh, friends. Uh, her name is Jan, and and I'd like to welcome her to listening to the program because I can see her right there, her her phone number. So if anybody else would like to. Just listen via the telephone. The numbers three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. So, as we as we as we're examining what the watermelon can do, fruits have combinations of nutrients. They have combinations of nutrients that are unique and different for each fruit. And just like the Bellini has a combination of symptoms and a combination causality each individual so will so do these plants have a very very unique uh, composition in and of themselves and and you'll you'll find that uh, you know the watermelon has has many different types of sugars has a lot of selenium a lot of zinc a lot of uh, of a different uh, factors it's it's a very 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 helpful fruit to eat, and it is in the combination that the ability to modify and alleviate some uh, fear Kundalini symptoms. It's in this combination of nutrients that the key to that to that calming effect is. It's not through one thing. You know, scientists. You know, they like to pull everything apart. And then they find out what they feel is the strongest acting mechanism within a certain thing. And then they'll just forget about the combination. They'll just use that one aspect of that one case fruit. And this is a huge error. You know, he did not develop watermelons uh, so that only one aspect of the watermelon could be used. That's like... uh, that would be like you and I taking a watermelon and only eating the seeds. Okay, because the seeds, you know, the most powerful part of the of a plant is that which it uses for reproduction, right? So, since that's the most powerful part as we as the scientists might uh hypothesize, well then that that's what we should use to eat. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't taste good, but hey, it's the most powerful part. I don't I don't I like the combinations that are in foods the nutrient combinations that exist in foods and the nutrient combination that exists in the watermelon is exceptionally uh, useful to people that are having kundalini awakening same same with the coconut we look at the coconut you know and if you look at the doctrine of signature of the coconut well in many cases it's either green or it's brown uh if um, the green ones, uh, I think, are used mainly for the water that's within them, whereas the brown ones are used uh, for the the meat of the nut, but also for the for the milk or the water that's within them. Uh, the inside is white. Okay, um, it's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful food, uh, and it has so many uses here. I can't even. I can't even start to describe all the many uses of the coconut, which we really have just only discovered within the last decade. Um, we really just begin to touch the levels of, of usefulness and, and and the complexity of the of the many nutrients that make up the combination of nutrients for the coconut. And I'll suggest that uh, if a person is in a position where they can't Find the watermelon. Well, the coconut and the coconut milk have 
a combination of nutrients that is also very helpful, uh, very hydrating for the kidneys and the adrenals. Okay, and I, I, I focus on the on the second chakra, first and second chakra, quite a bit, uh, simply because at the beginning of, of of an awakening, these areas are very very physically expressive. You feel the kidneys expand, and you know one third larger than their normal size, which means they're kind of pushing out your belt line. You can reach your hands back, and you can feel the actual kidney pushing its way through the skin. Now this is this is just a you know it's a temporary thing, but it is it is a real thing as those kidneys are transformed by the kundalini, uh you need to stay hydrated. You need to stay out of fear even though the fight or flee uh uh hormone will be pushing fear into your system. As you know about this and as you're able to eat the watermelon or the coconut or some of the other uh fruits and vegetables that are that are helpful in this area uh your awakening in that area will be much smoother you will not have that accidental temptation of falling into kundalini syndrome which a lot of these these uh these body uh tactile symptoms uh can push a person towards if they don't know what's occurring they never, they don't, you know, the first place they're going to go is the MD, and the MD is going to go, oh, wow, your kidneys are <laughs> Take an aspirin, or, or maybe we should have those removed. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> kidding. Anyway, so each food for kundalini has a very specific makeup of different nutrients that will begin to help the person have a, a happy and healthy Kundalini awakening. Let's go over to the meats now for a second. If that if that animal has been slaughtered in a in a painful way, well, a lot of of uh, hormones are excreted by the animal's uh, own glands that are very representative of the of the of the hormone that that the, uh, the adrenals in the humans give out. These Hormones saturate the meat, and when you eat the meat, you partake of that anxiety and that fear because that is the way that they were killed. So be very, very, very careful and do your best. If you have the animal and you raise it, well, then then I, I would suggest that you you prepare that animal in a very kind way for its eminent passing and and you find a level of gratitude a strong level of gratitude for that animal as as you partake of it and that you are in many ways what you eat so be that kind person kind predator and um one moment Yes, so pardon me for that moment. So yeah, yeah, be that kind predator, be that kind human. And if you're going to partake, then be a part of that entire process. Now, I know for those of you living in the cities and and those of you that don't really have an idea of what it's like to to prepare animals that have been killed for food, and you know this this is this is shocking. This is shocking information. It is. It is. It, it is not to be taken lightly. And, and, and a life, the life of animals, lightly. But let's just let's just look at what we do with our cars and what what life collect on the on the radiator. Those bugs and butterflies and wasps and dragonflies and moths and ladybugs and all of those things. All of those pretty indiscriminately, don't we? That none of us, if any, if we drive a car, then we're doing a lot of things just so that we can go to point B. Okay, but you're gonna. I am not pushing a vegetarian regimen on people because I know from my experience with the Kundalini that the Kundalini requires meat sometimes, and some 
of it. And as I've mentioned in other programs, I would suggest that you follow that instruction. Follow that instruction. Let that be okay with you, because it is. There is no greater authority than the divine. And the divine knows what we do not. And one of the things that the divine is that it knows how to nourish its kundalini children. It knows what nutrients they need. Okay, And of course, uh, as I mentioned in other programs, it will tell you often. But if you, know, if you haven't reached that level of communication with it yet, or if you're aspiring towards kundalini, these food choices that I've been suggesting will be helpful for you. But also the attitudes that you adopt as you're eating the food choices will also help you. Okay? If you are what you eat, well, you are what you think as well. And so think positively about yourself and about what you're consuming. Realize that you're not so much killing it as you're just joining with it, and it's joining with you. This makes it a marriage. Every time you, you eat a meal, you're, you're, you're inside of a marriage, a sacred marriage, with the food that you're eating. Uh, I was just reading the other day, uh, I think uh, on the website, Scientists have just discovered that, wow, plants have feelings. Or shall we say that plants respond to feelings. And and I think that it's true. It's true. Everything that lives feels. Everything that lives has, has an emotional body. We may not understand it. We may not uh, connect it to our own. It may not even resemble our own. But it it, it doesn't have to doesn't have to resemble a human being you know which you know you know i'll digress a little bit you know we assign intelligence to those uh creatures that have a large brain as if that makes the difference okay so so our assumptions about what is intelligent life or what is feeling life such as feeling pain you, you hear this a lot out here in the west they don't feel pain like we do so it's okay to kill them well that's just bullshit oh, did i say that on the air oh, i apologize to any bulls out there that may have been offended uh that is ridiculous that is absolutely ridiculous and that is just that is the kind of attitude that that isn't uh, conducive to kundalini awakening. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> so, as we are what we eat and as we are what we think, we are also what we feel. So feel the joy of that marriage. Feel, it. And I know I'm stretching it out here and I know I'm, a, I'm, I'm attaching a lot of things to the simple pleasure of eating. But I just, you know, these as you expand within the kundalini, these areas come up for you. These areas will come up for you. Uh, the other thing that I want you to look at is I want you to look at simplifying your diet. When you find those, those fruits and vegetables or meats that, that uh, you feel and are feeling good about having, not good to the ego, but good to the physical source, to the, to the source of your force, which is the kundalini, partake of them and, and feel good about who you are and how you are. Feel good. Feeling good about what you eat and why you're eating it and what went in the process of, of allowing it to be given as a food to you. This is only long and drawn out because you're hearing it didactically from a from a person. Uh, it is not hard to do. It, and, and as you look at the food, all of this occurs in a nanosecond. Your gratitude doesn't take long. Gratitude is there or it isn't. And it's there in a split second. Just like, you know, as you look at your food, you can have that gratitude. You can have that knowledge and that that information about all that went in to bringing that food to your plate, to your table. 
So know this and feel this. Use those three things, okay? What it is, okay? What you think about it, what you think about yourself as you as you're about to have that food, and then how you feel about having that food. Now, don't let your ego run away with this. You know, the, the ego wants to control everything. And so don't let your ego run away with, you know, making you have a, you know, a certain type of feeling. Know what it, know what it is. Know what it is. Okay. Know that the ego is this and the ego, uh, the ego will try to control what it is you eat and it'll do that by, uh, helping you to desire a certain thing. I would I would suggest that you do not give in to your desires. Give in to the requirements of the kundalini and the requirements of the body. Many desires that we have are based in taste, the taste of the food, right? Or the smell of the food, the smell and the taste. Um, well, what happens if that food is really bland, can we still feel good about it? Do we still desire it? Probably not. I mean, what what I have found in my own my own uh, self is that if I can, if, if, you know, when I come into a, a a situation where I'm eating bland foods, so when I travel, you know, most of the foods I'm not really enthusiastic about. So I'm picking a lot of the bland foods, the foods that have the least amount of processing, um, the foods that don't give me an attachment of desire based upon its taste or smell. Okay. Uh, I will suggest you to you to really simplify your diet. Simplify it. Chew it really well. Be grateful, even though it is not super tasty or, you know, loaded with MSG, monosodium glutamate, to enhance the taste. <laughs> I, I will suggest that you really, really try for a very, very simple, bland diet. And I'm going to bring in another uh, quality here that I want you to consider. I'm not going to make it, unless you're a private student, I won't make it a uh, something, a, a, a real strong suggestion because, well, it's eggs. I want you to just eat the yolk of the egg, not the white part. Just like I did at breakfast today, I had two eggs and, and, I, and I took the fork and I just cut away all the white material that I could and I because I don't really enjoy eggs that much but I I enjoy the fact that this life and this food was given to me to to consume and and so I'm very grateful for that aspect of it um, do that every day and if you can do it as its own little separate micro meal so have an egg every day, and I won't suggest raw eggs. I don't suggest those, uh, simply because of, of how most of the eggs are produced in the United States, with salmonella being such a, an unpleasant experience that I don't. Ex I, I will not uh, suggest anybody eat any kind of raw egg at all. But I will suggest that you eat yolk, and so that means that you'll have to have it over hard, hard boiled over medium, in some way you need to be able to access just the yolk, not the white of the egg. Now, if you're somebody who's doing a lot of hard, heavy exercise and work, uh, that's different. Then you can have that white part of the egg. But the yolk of the egg is the, the part of the egg that is giving to your neural systems. Your neural systems are one step below your energetic anatomy. It's very important for the energetic anatomy to be, to be expressed along the lines of the neural system. Okay, and so have those eggs. Those eggs are very very beneficial in that area. And I know uh, many people are vegans, v e g a n s, not vegetarian, but vegan. And 
I will never suggest anyone become a vegan. And I don't buy into any of the hype around all the vegans doing this or the vegans doing that. Vegetarianism, I'm okay with. Vegetarianism, you know, you can still have a kefir and dairy products that provide vitamin B12 and, you know, essential nutrients such as that. And that will allow you to live a happy and productive life and can, yes, it definitely uh, assist you in your awakening of the kundalini. But I will not suggest veganism. Veganism, to me, is a is a dangerous fad, and uh, it's based upon, uh, y- you know, the 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 incorrect thinking that that uh, oh, you know, I don't want to kill anything except they're you know they're they're killing massive amounts of plants and bacteria and things like that, but that's okay. So basically, you know, they're they're kind of making a judgment about death, and they're and they're and they're, you know, they're choosing what they want to kill but they're not admitting that they're killing anything because that in their mind plants don't have uh have emotional bodies and so i will not suggest veganism at all i will suggest vegetarian vegetarianism and that's fine but the most that i will i will suggest this condition of eating or this choice of eating foods i will suggest is being an omnivore an omnivore takes a little bit from many 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 different food groups okay uh, this is very similar to that uh, 80-20 diet, uh, if you ever read that book. I don't know who the author is, but, you know, it's, it's very much like a primate diet where the primates, you know, being uh, hunter-gatherer communities, uh, you know, they will partake of many, many different food groups. And I will suggest that you do this as well. Uh, so omnivorism and vegetarianism, I'm very supportive of. Carnivorism or veganism, I am not supportive of. And uh, this is coming from my Kundalini. Oh, I just thought of another orange plant would be a pumpkin. Pumpkins are quite orange, too. Uh, so if you have any questions and you'd like to call up, call me up here in the studio, the number is United States Area Code 347-934-0026. 347-934-0026. And we'll continue. Now, as you decrease your portions, doing very well, and you're you know you're separating the uh, the starches from the meats and things of that nature, you're going to find yourself weight. Don't be afraid of this. Even if you're a very very thin person, don't be afraid of this. Allow this to occur. Now, if you lose too much weight, then uh, then I'll suggest that you add, you know, definitely some more fat into your diet. The one thing that I'd like to point out with is you have a lot of these in- nutrients like chia seeds and and you know the three the you know the the three six nine oils and things of that nature, fatty acid. Uh, I I you know people tend to think that if something is good, then more good thing is better. And what I'm going to suggest for you right now is that balance is the best thing. Don't, you know, eat a truckload of chia seeds simply because they're good for you. Simply because they're just fad. The same thing goes with coconuts. You know, don't don't go over, you know, way out of balance because you know, all the hype is saying, "Oh, coconuts this, coconuts that, chia seeds this, chia seeds that." You know, <laughs> Find a way to moderate your concerns about your well-being. Find a way to take the fear out of how you feel about your well-being. Ah, looks like we might have another caller here. One moment, everyone. Okay, another, we have a question here. Okay. Hello. Master, hi, Master C. Hey, Fast G, how are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I uh, <laughs> I, I have a number of questions. Uh, okay. Just three. <laughs> okay. Um, first I'm ready. off, 
when you talk about meats, um, there, you know, Michigan is um, uh, probably one of the largest repositories of, uh, of uh, Muslim uh, people in, here in the, in the states. I, I and didn't they know. They have that. what is known as halal meat. Halal um, akbar. Halal. <laughs> H A L A L halal meat, and it's supposed to be uh, killed um, with deep respect and in the most humane of ways. Do you suggest that that might be, um, if it is indeed uh, raised organically, that might be the best way to go? That could be a good way. Now, a lot of people, a lot of a lot of people in in various uh, belief systems, you know, they'll. They'll adopt a belief system, but they won't really live it. You know what I mean? Right, right. So right. if you, yeah, if you can find a a a, a a a a farm or a or a a a, a, a place where you know that people are taking that seriously, then I okay. would think that would be an excellent that would be an excellent uh, place to go, okay. as long as you're not eating pork. Right. Right. Muslims don't a, eat pork, though, do, do they? They don't eat pork. No, 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 no. It's like poison to them. Okay. Okay. Um, we spoke of watermelons. Um, and, of course, growing in the South, uh, growing up in the South, uh, in Texas, we used to have yellow meat watermelons. Um, is, there, is there a superiority of the red meat over the yellow meat? Um, is that a natural watermelon or is that a GMO yes. watermelon? No, no, it's 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 been around longer than the GMO, I think. Um, okay, all right. Yellow. Mm-hmm. Um, that has a level of pigmentation, right? Uh, the the pigment pigmentation towards the yellow. Uh, so you're basically, you know, it's basically the yellow versus the red, and and I'm going to suggest, although I have not, <laughs> I have not had a yellow fleshed watermelon. Uh, Fashi. Okay. So, from an experiential basis, I can't really give you uh, the okay. answer that you need. But I do know that with the red flesh, uh, they it does have an extremely rapid and active advance into the into the uh, second uh, chakra and the kidneys and adrenals. Okay. Okay. And the, the other melons. Uh, I mean, there are a number of uh, different honey, melons. Honeydew. Like honey. Honeydew is green. Huh? Honeydew is green, and, and uh, yeah, that's a very good fruit to have, of course. And the cantaloupe is, is once again, a, a second chakra uh, melon. Okay. 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 Now, lastly, um, I'm going to go back online. Um, would you would you at least uh, address the, the iodine um, matter again, please? Oh, yeah. Um, because, um, I, you know, I've started to take uh, one that um, is not uh, the... The type that you mentioned, because this one was easier, and was it was it Lugol's? Uh, Which one are you taking? New, new, nascent or new, something like that. Um, it's is it, uh, is, it, is it potassium iodine? No. Okay, no, right. then not. I would not suggest it. I would not suggest it uh, okay. for you know for the radioact. You know, we brought that up in conjunction with Fukushima and the radioactivity uh, that's right. being released in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, right. For radioactive, it's potassium iodide, and oh. the one that I found the most information on was Lugol's, L-U-G-O-L-S. Right. And that's potassium iodide. Now, with atomidine, which is the one that I take, right. uh, that, is, that is an oral iodine uh, that has been electrified. Atomidine, right. basically how they – this is an Edgar Cayce uh, remedy, and it's just amazing how he came upon it. Uh, right through through his source, what we would call Kundalini. Mm-hmm. Um, it was developed uh, by the shamans first of ancient India as a oh. way to fight malaria. Oh, and so they yeah they would they would they were able to concoct it in certain ways. It it came out as a really thick dark brown syrup, and the person uh-huh. would take that, and they would you know they would eventually recover from malaria. Okay. Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, as the missionaries, you know, invaded India and trying to turn everybody into Christians, uh, 
they found one one missionary guy found out about this and and he started to try to replicate it in a laboratory back in the states. Well, Edgar Casey's source suggested that Edgar Casey team up with him and and they did team up together and they formed an oral iodine that they called a tomadine. And what it is is that you 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 get this uh, this uh, iodine and you, in big vats and they electrify the iodine for 30 days. Mm-hmm. which changes the molecular composition of the iodine and okay. gives it that, the special benefits that it that it gives. Now, uh, you're saying you're having a hard time getting it? No, no. no I mean, I, I can get it. It's just that this other one was more. It's called nascent, uh, na- N-A-S-C-E-N-T iodine. And this uh, is from, uh, is this from Florida? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, that's not bad. Um, that's not a bad product. I know of that product. I know uh, that they're changing it a little bit, uh, but that's okay. Right. I don't. See, you'll probably have to take more of it than you would of the the atomidine. You know, I only take a drop. A drop yeah. has over six hundred mcgs of iodine in it, and that's enough for me. Right. Okay. 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 But with the, okay. with the. Uh, with the nascent stuff, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, I mean, if you purchase that, go ahead and, and follow the directions. But as you follow the directions, you do what your kundalini is telling you about it. Right, right. Don't, well, she don't told just me to, read to, the label. Right. <laughs> well, she told me to only do a drop. And if I do a drop, do, I can. it's okay to try out uh, twice a day. But I found that once a day is just fine. Yeah, yeah. If you take two drops. Found out, and maybe other listeners have found out as well. If you take two drops, uh, your your heart rate goes up because it's a right. heart stimulant, and uh-huh. you just feel a little anxious. You feel like uh-huh. you have to do something all the time, and uh-huh. you know it's hard to meditate. It's hard to to go into a say a more balanced uh, uh, behavior. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Well, you're very welcome. Good to hear you. Pastor. Yes, sir. Thank you for Thank all. you. And if anybody else has a, a question about what they're taking or what they're eating or what they would like to take or eat with regards to their energetic anatomy as, as uh, you know, from a kundalini context, then feel free to call in 347-934-0026. Um, okay, so, so, so continuing on. Um, as you eat a simplified version of your food, this begins to detach you from the egocentric desires of having a lot of sugar or having a lot of stimulant. And by stimulant, I mean like that hot uh, hot sauce, and especially for the people at the beginning of their awakening or within the first three or four years. Uh, as you as you mature within your awakening, you can go back to having the hot sauce or the caffeine or any of that stuff. But depending on on your kundalini and how it advises on that. But in the beginning, as you're as you're nurturing these finer states of being, I will suggest that you begin to simplify to the point where your ego is not being satisfied. By the by, what it is you consume, okay? Um, it's not being satisfied. It's not being uh, propped up, okay? You're not propping it up by giving into the in, to the to the to the ego and and eating that Snickers bar, or that uh, t- uh, McDonald's, whatever it is they sell there. I won't call it a hamburger because hamburgers rot and. McDonald's hamburgers don't seem to rot, and that's just a little disturbing to me. I don't know about you. But as we simplify our diet and we detach from the ego in that way, the detachment from the ego opens up space for more of the divine to come through us. More channels are beginning to be opened through uh, the detachment of stimulants and sugars and things of that nature. Now, don't get me wrong. 
all foods are turned into sugars in the body, and I'm not talking about that sugar. I'm talking about artificial sugar. I'm talking about sweeteners. Now, of course, I, I, I guess I should mention the sweet and low, aspartame, all of these things, I don't care what color the package is, don't eat them. They're bad for your kidneys. Don't eat them. Do not eat any form of artificial sweetener that is on the market today. None of them are really good. You can have stevia. A stevia is a is a is a is a plant from the uh, tropical regions, and uh, you know some people enjoy that as a as a sweetener. And then of course there there are different forms of anise here in California that is also like. 50 times sweeter than sugar. Uh, and if you're going to have that, then fine. Fine, have that. But don't have it to a gluttonous degree. Matter of fact, I guess since I mentioned the word gluttony, don't be gluttonous at all with your eating. Do not be gluttonous at all with your eating. If possible, always leave the dinner table not completely satiated with food. Leave the, ta- the, 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 the table with the feeling that you could put more in if you wanted to. But choose not to. Choose not to do that. Remember, it's hard, it's hard to describe this to people, but I, with my kundalini, my, my kundalini arranged for me to have a job, where I could practice towards the Kundalini. I mean, as I was very, very uh, uh, blessed by the Kundalini to be able to to work an eight-hour-a-day job and to be able to meditate and pray times a day, every day. Uh, you know, whether I did it in, you know, I, I didn't want to call a lot of attention to myself because the five Tibetans, you know, they, they look kind of uh, exotic for most people. But I would go into a park and do those and then do the uh, the after the Tibetans meditations and pranayamas and compression prayers and, you know, these things after the uh, the five Tibetans. But I, but I would also eat very specific things. I would eat a lot of red, a lot of green. I would eat a lot of yellow, okay? And then given to, 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 to eat a lot of fresh pressed carrots a lot and i still am driven to do some of those things but not as much and i find you know i'll buy a a six dollar half gallon of fresh pressed carrot juice out here in california organic and i will find that the kundalini will only let me have so much just a certain amount and then it then i just don't want it anymore it's weird the way that occurs it, it it's comfort it, it it's also comforting that that the divine aspect of you knows how to nurture itself through the activities it compels you to do <laughs> i am not suggesting that you all do you know five times a day the meditation and the practice towards kundalini i know that you know 99% of the people won't be able to fit that into their schedule and i certainly uh, understand that, but I also understand that you can eat your way into oblivion. You can clog your arteries to the point where you know you're there. You go off onto the next life journey, and so definitely begin to cut your your what you eat in half, in half, and to masticate or chew that food uh, tremendously so. Now, I know you won't be able to do this all the time. Sometimes you're in a hurry. Today, Rosemary and I, we went to a, a wonderful breakfast spot where I was going to, you know, initiate her into the to the two-egg uh, routine. Rosemary. Yeah. <laughs> I'm bringing Rosemary over here. And, and she's going to, to have a seat here. And uh, Rosemary, how did you like the, the two-egg routine? It was interesting. It, it, there's a great respect and attention I had to give to cutting off the yolk gently and just slowly and little, little, like little tangents to that circle, so I could 
get the yolk because um, <laughs> it was not a solid. But um, but I had a lot a lot of respect and a lot of presence uh, was interesting and as well the discipline of saying yes I'm not going to eat that. And uh, when you, I forget, and you haven't said about mixing things. Not yet, yeah. But what I looked for was what else could I have that was not meat. Ah. It, was, it was a challenge to find something because the whole, our, rest, our ways of eating include a main part of meat. Well, R- Rosemary, thank you. Uh, yeah, with the egg... As I as I mentioned earlier, you want to have that maybe as a little bit of a micro meal of its own first. Uh, the eggs you can have with the meat, the eggs you can have with the vegetables, the eggs you can even have with the fruit if you want. Although not ever really being an an, an enjoyer of eggs, uh, I'm 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 a little challenged in in finding where you would put it in a. I guess you could put it in a smoothie, um, and you could have it that way. Two in addition. So the eggs and the butter and some of the dairy products like cheese, uh, it slides. Those, 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 those foods will slide from the, that you can have them with the meat and you can have them with the veg, vegetables and fruits. You just don't want to mix the starches with the meats. Really, that's, that's the essential, uh, idea. Yes. So wow, thank you, Rosemary. Yeah, yeah. So Rosemary and I went in, and and uh, I'm talking about not having enough time to do all these things. Well, uh, we we went into the restaurant, and I kind of gave her a little instruction on cutting out the yolk, and you know, my eggs came, and and they weren't exactly, you know, well, they were they weren't very close to to where I could have them, and 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 you know, get them down. Um, and so I, you know, they, they went back to the cook and he hardened them up a little bit and then I had them, but I couldn't, you know, I, I had a, I had a Skype call that I had to get to. There was a lot of interference and a lot of stuff. And so I had to hurry. And so I wasn't able to masticate my food the way that I normally would. I wasn't able to, to, uh, to eat my breakfast in, in, in such a peaceful way. But, all that being said, I left the table slightly hungry, which was okay. <laughs> of course, poor Rosemary, you know, she had to be part of that, that hurried state. And, and I have to say, she's doing very, very well. Matter of fact, she finished her breakfast before I, I finished mine, and she did very well with it. Rosemary, congratulations. You're, you're doing well. And I am putting her through, through some hard stresses. And, uh, and she, you know, she's holding up. She's holding up. Kundalini is not easy. Don't ever let anyone tell you that it's easy. But it doesn't have to be as hard as somebody that might have Kundalini syndrome. And, and uh, so we would always work away from the Kundalini. Well, you know, away from inserting fear into the process. Uh, I have to say that, that with Rosemary, uh, she is being given a full, a full, Full uh, serving, shall we say? Since we're talking about food, she's being given a full serving of uh, of many of the attributes of Kundalini. Certainly, from uh, the, a, a beginner's point of view, um, she's had some symptoms so far, and and these symptoms will be increasing. Uh, matter of fact, after the show here, I'll be giving her a uh, another energetic infusion just to 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 help her along her along her way uh if anybody would like to call in about their kundalini awakening experience or have a question about it the number is 347-934-0026 as we eat our food as as we eat our food i will also suggest reading about the kundalini reading uh uh information about it uh, reading writings of those who have had it, like you could read Krishna, you could read uh, uh, Chrism, you can read 
uh, anybody that you know has had the actual kundalini, what I call actual kundalini, which is the real kundalini, not just the wannabe kundalini that that they can sell $5,000 tickets to. Um, if you have the actual kundalini, oh, 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 stand by one moment. One moment here. Oh, let's see. Everyone, I'd like to welcome Julie to the program. Welcome, Julie. Hi. Hello. You all have to forgive me. I am. I have a cold. So oh, it's okay. It's okay. Although you know you're in Southern Carolina, South Carolina, it should be kind of warm <laughs> there, right? <laughs> oh, well, we're in the middle of an ice storm, actually. I know. I know. <laughs> How are you, my dear? Uh, good. Good. How's your little my boy? I know he, he oh. got his lip cut. He did. Yes, he did. He he's doing pretty good. Okay. He's, What's your question? He's a trooper. He my is. my question is, um, you were talking about thoroughly chewing our food. Um, how do you handle that when you don't have very many teeth? <laughs> oh no, that's a good question. Good question. Um, I'm so much challenged in that area myself. Uh, what you can do is you can blend it. So if you're if you're having fruits or vegetables, well, there are certain combinations. As and as Rosemary mentioned, I haven't gone into the the juicing combinations, but I will get into that in the 47 minutes I have left. Uh, you can blend it up, and and you can blend it. You know, they sell some of these blenders. You know, have like a Harley Davidson motor attached to them. It seems, and uh, they really they really they they blend it up so much that it creates heat, and you can create soup that way. Uh, so that is one, and and it's a good way. And I, as you know, I've suggested it with the uh, the carrot and the and the uh, the greens mix. You just yeah. blend, and there you go. Uh, but as far as chewing goes, chew like with me. whatever <laughs> chew chew with whatever teeth they they you, that a person has. That I have. It's just, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, and, and and you just you just you don't have to chew quickly, and and you know you don't. It may it may make the meal last a little longer, but as the the longer you, the less you desire. Gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, know, I guess I, I figured that, that much. Like, I should just slow down. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you should just slow down food. a little. Enjoy your food. Enjoy yeah. your food. <laughs> Enjoy. Well, well, enjoy I do. I, I do enjoy my food a little too much at times. <laughs> so yeah, this was well, a great yeah, show yeah. for me. Well, and, and as you simplify your food, as you begin to you know get into the some of the more mundane, less tasty foods that are actually really, really healthy, you know, and I'll use chia seeds, even though I said don't eat too much, and I still stick to that. Don't eat too many chia seeds. You know, don't eat a truckload. And don't don't make that the the staple of your diet, but the chia seeds, uh, as rosemary. Now, rosemary, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you on online here again, <laughs> because rosemary has been eating the chia seeds. She's following a <laughs> recipe that I, I, it's a very complicated recipe where you you have to boil the water and then you have to pour it on chia seeds. It's very difficult. How is it? chosen to do I eat oatmeal in the morning and I still like the benefits of the oatmeal so I have I boil it's about a little bit less than half a cup of water and two tablespoons of the chia and I keep stirring it it really absorbs the water very quickly and and I mix that with the oatmeal and I put fruit in that and so that's how it is tasteless so if you depend on good taste to keep you eating, you'll probably have something to that. Well, thank you, Rosemary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now she's doing, she's adding stuff to it, you know. What I'm suggesting, Julie, is that the blander the nutritious food, the better it is for the kundalini. Okay. Um, it. I like what Rosemary's doing because she, I don't think she's adding any other sugars to it. And so she's she's mixing the chia seeds with the oatmeal and then adding some fruit. That is a perfect breakfast uh, food uh, in addition to, of course, the two egg yolks uh, that day or the one egg yolk as, as, as you see fit. And you'll notice a lot of kids, 
if if the kids are allowed to choose their food from a from a list of nutritious foods, many of the children will choose uh, a hard boiled egg or a soft boiled egg. They will choose that. Oddly enough, uh, I never did. Did and mom was getting me ready for the swim team every morning. You know, we had to get up at like six to get there by seven to leave. You know, in time for for school, and she'd always. Uh, give me an, an, uh, a hard-boiled egg, uh, which is perfect because I ate the whole egg, including the whites, because I was a young kid trying to, to, to grow stronger. And uh, for your Julie, I'd, I'd suggest that for him as well. Yeah, he uh, he does like scrambled eggs. We, I've hmm. tried, we've tried different things with him. Uh, well, scrambled eggs, eggs for him is good. But, he's, but he's, scrambled, he's a, he, he does like scrambled. He's a six-year-old, right? Yes. So for a six-year-old, you want him to eat the white of that egg. So scrambled's perfect. Okay. Scrambled's Good. perfect. Yeah, it might put a little cheese on him. <laughs> See how he likes that. <laughs> I do now, have one more question. Please, please. Go ahead. Um, I don't know if you mentioned that I, I came into the broadcast just a few minutes late. I was having some trouble um, connecting. Uh, but you had mentioned not mixing starches with the proteins or like well with, with the assuming, dense proteins I'm I'm saying don't mix don't mix the starches and the meats like potatoes with meat right okay <laughs> yes. why, why is that that old standby <laughs> <laughs> meat potatoes no you know I'm from Iowa I grew up uh, in yeah, Iowa, yeah, so. I know I know right that, right that's so a, that's a <laughs> Uh, it, it's actually it's it's not just the potatoes. Uh, it's with right, any right. with any any fruit and vegetables because the the way the body will want to digest the food within a spiritual kundalini context, uh, it is there is less of a focus on on having to digest anything else. Okay. Now there there are some more there are some more uh reasons uh about not wanting to mix the the meat and the veggies or the meat and the fruits. Um, the meat in and of itself needs to be appreciated just by itself. Uh from a spiritual context, uh the the meat of that mammal or that fish or that that lizard or whatever it is you're eating cuz a lot of people eat rattlesnakes and that's fine. Uh it needs to be enjoyed just by itself. But 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 you can also mix in, say if you're eating rattlesnake or you're eating you can eat chicken, you can eat turkey, you can eat beef, you can you can eat some of these other uh uh meats mixed in. But the way the body digests the food, it is best to separate those two. And then the way the kundalini takes the energy from the food uh, and I mean Kundalini here. I'm not just talking about chi or, or you know, the body electric. I'm talking about the Kundalini, and this is all about the Kundalini. And so you you won't see this uh, ex- exemplified in any other diet that I know of. I mean, maybe there is somebody out there writing a diet right now off of this radio show. <laughs> Make a million dollars. The Kundalini diet. Um yeah, the the reason why is the way the food is digested. Okay. It's di- yeah. it's digested differently. It takes a different level of time to digest. Okay, and it and it's it's of a heavier quality. The densely packed proteins are of a heavier quality. And uh that allows when you just put the meats in, that allows for the body to focus primarily upon those densely packed proteins when the when the when the uh the starches come in and there's a I'm I'm being shown right now <laughs> shown a vision from my Kundalini right now. How do I, how do I say this? Um there are aspects of the starches and the meat that disqualify each other when you mix them. Okay. So nutrients uh, I'm being shown that nutrients will disqualify each other if they're not separated, except for the eggs or the dairy. 
Okay. And that, 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 that's something, you know, because a lot of people don't like the dairy, you know, lactose intolerant, whatever. And so they'll, they'll start drinking coconut milk or things of that nature. Well, you want to keep that separate because, because dairy is being used, you know, to say, oh, you, you know, you can go with the meat and the dairy and then the fruits and vegetables with the dairy. Well, that's not the same with the coconut milk or with the, you know, uh, soy milk or any of those things. Those are vegetables can't mix them right okay i wish i could give you a more uh, uh scientific uh uh no that, that's, <laughs> that's a perfect that, that's a perfect explanation now that that's absolutely perfect i've got some rearranging with my eating to do <laughs> well yeah and and, and i think well, certainly for you, because you are a private student, and so yeah, yeah, there's yeah. some rearranging to do. And, and 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 with Rosemary, Rosemary, have you have you practiced anything close to this uh, b- before you came out here? Some little bits of it, but not this way, and certainly not with the intention of being present to my Kundalini as I'm eating. And I don't, I'm just learning that today in way to do that. But I have not had sugar for 25 years. I just somehow was guided early that I knew that wasn't good. So I'm ahead of the game on that. You are definitely ahead of the game, Rosemary. As are you, Julie. As are you. <clears throat> now, with uh, uh, you can use grits, Julie. Okay. If you can find some organic grits. Grits are fine. Grits are fine. You yes, can. I, you I can, absolutely can. Yeah, grits. I love grits. I, I, the name grit sounds kind of gritty, and so I was not so attracted to it. But then when I finally went down to the south and I had an actual grit, it was good. So. <laughs> <laughs> I've not tried them yet, so I'll. Oh, they're wonderful. They, they taste. They're they're kind of like a. Uh, well, they're they're. Um, <laughs> they're like they're not like oatmeal. I would say they're like a uh, a less toxic form of malto meal. Malto meal, yeah. That that you can that that isn't uh, like a man made. It's not a wheat. Oh, I guess it is a wheat product. But but if you can get them organic, uh, you could mix the chia in with those and put some fruit on there, and that would be a really good uh, uh, to have in addition to your to your egg yolk as well. Now, I don't think I need to worry about this with you, uh, Julie, but for, I don't want you to, to to eat the eggs raw. Don't eat the eggs raw. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, the salmonella, you know, I cannot, I cannot, you know, suggest people do something that's going to harm them. Uh, you know, I'm not a, a, a medical doctor. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not any of these things. I'm a Kundalini awakened person. And from the Kundalini awakened standpoint, with the full of, of the quality of food in this country right now, uh, 2014, I will not suggest that you buy eggs from a store, even if they're organic, and then eat them raw. Cook them. Cook the eggs. Boil the eggs and strip off the white. Feed that to the dog or the kitty. And, or the six-year-old, and <laughs> eat the yolk. <laughs> no, no offense to the six-year-olds. <laughs> okay, all right. You have more questions, Julie? Uh, no, I don't. Thank you very much. How 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 have you been going lately? Um, I've had a lot of energy. That, 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 energetic that you want to say? Things. Uh. <laughs> I've I've had a lot of energetic things going on from head to toe. <laughs> oh well, good. That, um, that's over the past good. couple of weeks, so, yeah. I'm being well, worked on pretty good. This this new diet will show that that should fit right on in with what you've been experiencing. Sounds good. I I have some chia seeds actually. I will add those into a few of the the, the chia the seeds that I soak eat. up. They they soak up nine times their own size in water. Nine I times. actually used them the first time to put them on my face. Oh, that's they, cool! Uh, I never thought that. That's that's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Did, did it did it work? <laughs> uh yeah. It made your, made my face very soft. Yes. Oh, nice. Well, uh, there you go, folks. You got another use weird. for this. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> yep. Put them on your face if you don't want to eat them. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, well, I am going to go into some of the questions now, Julie. And yes. since you just mentioned that, I'm going to mention the concept of chia seeds now. What you do is you re or you prehydrate the chia seeds. So you, we'll just say you get a couple tablespoons of chia seeds and you pour them into a, a 12 ounce glass container with a lid. And you fill that up with, say, maybe half uh, of the, you know, six ounces of water. And you shake it up and you just put it in the fridge overnight. And those chia seeds will turn into uh, little floating, gosh, how do you describe them? They they look like little, well, I don't want to say that because I don't want to gross anyone out. Um <laughs> They gain an aura. They gain an aqueous aura about them, and uh, they're very soft and squishy at that point. And then you pour fruit juice into the bottle. I did this last night uh, uh, under the supervision of Rosemary and and uh, Francine, who who uh, who's here at the house. And uh, boy, was it tasty! And I had done this before. And they they actually sell. A product. Let me see if I still have the bottle here. Um, let's see. No. Nope. <laughs> Did something with it. But they sell a product uh, that is, is that you can buy off the shelf. They they sell a product that you can buy off the shelf. Chia seeds pre-mixed into it. And really, all it is is just uh, fruit juice and 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 prehydrated chia And it's great. It's really, really, really good. And thank you, thank you. Well, Rosemary was looking for that bottle. Um, so you can do that with the chia seeds. Now, uh, there are certain uh, recipes, uh, one that's being given on the... Uh, the Kundalini Awakening exclamation point on Facebook uh, that, you know, involves a lot of ingredients. But I like it, and my Kundalini likes it, and uh, I'll go ahead and see if I can get on over here. Oh, wait a minute here. Let me get back there. And I'll go ahead and uh, kind of describe that to you here right now. Let's see here. No, that's not it. And... Uh, Go with it. There we are. And uh, Julie, are you still on? Yes, I am. Good, good. I want you to stay on here. And uh, I think you've seen this one, right? The turmeric. Is it the turmeric? Yeah, the uh, turmeric. Drink. That's the one. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Now, uh, turmeric is uh, is is known uh, for many years as having anti-tumor activities. And uh, and it's also helpful in many other ways. And here's the recipe for anyone who would like to try it. One cup of, of hemp or coconut milk. Okay. One half cup frozen pineapple or mango chunks. One fresh banana. One tablespoon coconut oil. Uh, one half tablespoon of turmeric. One half tablespoon of cinnamon. One half teaspoon, or actually, these are half teaspoons of turmeric, half teaspoon of cinnamon, half teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of chia seeds, and then if you wanted to put maca, which is actually called maca maca, and it's from South America, you could put a teaspoon of that in as well, but you don't have to. And then uh, I, you blend it up, and there you go. There's there's a lot of good stuff in here, and this is a very energetic and a very nutritious drink, and I will I will recommend it, even though it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ingredients. I'm good with this. This is a very very positive uh, drink. Now you don't need to go way out with the chia seeds on that. Um, if you go way out on anything, you could increase the turmeric to to a full teaspoon rather than half a teaspoon and then mix it up from there. And uh and you can try that type of a of a recipe as well. Uh but once again I'm going to I'm going to uh suggest that people try to keep it simple. Keep it simple. Let me 
most of the people, well, I should say not most, but most people over 45 understand that the sexual drive is the strongest drive that a person has. Well, when the sexual drive tends to diminish because, for the men at least, a lack of testosterone, uh, the eating, the drive to eat increases in it, and that will replace the sexual drive. And I want you, I want to warn you against that. Do not replace eating with sex or, or, or sex with eating. <laughs> Did I say that right? Do not replace sex because of a low sex drive with an increased amount of consuming. Don't fall into that trap. Keep your portions small from a Kundalini context. Keep your portions as bland as you can or as natural and organic as you can within a kundalini context. Don't try to recover desire-based activities with eating. Okay. And I'm not I'm not saying this to you, Julie. I'm saying this to everyone. Oh, I, I think we've probably all been there before. <laughs> at some point. Not all of us, but well, maybe not all of us, but I think you know. So yeah, I think I think you have to reach a certain age before you can really get into that. Um. <laughs> well, I mean, I I I mean mostly uh, replacing uh, anything with food. Uh, you know, there's other types of eat, like emotional eating and things like that. Oh, that's you're you're absolutely correct, absolutely mm-hmm. correct, and and like uh, uh, bulimia. Uh, anorexia nervosa, yeah, you want that. That is a completely different order of eating, uh, and that does have, like you say, an, a, 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 a psychological, behavior-based, emotional imbalance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, that that is an interesting subject all by itself, and 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 it, it does lend itself to this conversation a little bit. So. Um, one moment here. I'm struggling to to obsessive compulsive behavior can be carried over into the the food and, and the and the and a, and a person's intake. Um, Kundalini people often are born with a level of obsessive compulsive behavior. Do a whole show based on the OCD. Okay, it is not bad it is not something that you need to to protect but it is something that you want to control difficult to do sometimes when you've got a kid that's licking the doorknobs because he's obsessive compulsive but when you realize that this will this this has this can have a direct tie in with kundalini later in life well that that ocd takes on a very different quality uh, OCD can be used in very positive ways that, you know, towards meditation, towards prayer, towards not eating in an incorrect way. So the OCD person, uh, the obsessive compulsive person can program their, their, their obsessive compulsive tendency towards eating in a very complete and very nutritious way. Uh, to call it a disorder, OCD, you know, obsessive compulsive disorder. There are people that are not having kundalini that have OCD that, yeah, for them it would be a disorder. Washing your hands so they bleed, that type of thing. Uh, but for kundalini people, well, that's a different deal because the kundalini will form the force behind the obsessive compulsive aspect of the of the uh, uh, of those tendencies, and so. If you are, uh, if you do have OCD tendencies, uh, you can program that, that compulsion to eat, for, for you to eat in certain ways that are very, very healthy. The obsessive part of it will mean that you can you won't allow yourself to go outside of those protocols. Okay. That's, that's how the OCD can be very, very beneficial within a Kundalini context. Uh, not certainly within a psychological or a medical context, but within a kundalini context, you don't need to take meds for your OCD. 
You just need to pay attention to what your kundalini says to do with it. <laughs> Easier said than done, I'm sure. <laughs> well, okay, so let's get into to a few more recipes. Any of the recipes that keep your your starches separated from meat, well, that's the way to go, of course. Um, you any of the of the doctrines of signature within the first five chakras. So, for instance, you could, if you wanted, you could mix a radish and an apple, even though, you know, from a doctrine of signature, well, they both have red on the outside, white on the inside, right? But it's not going to, it may not taste good. I, I, you know, I haven't tried it. <laughs> I haven't mixed radishes with cherries either. So, you know, that's something that somebody can experiment with. Typically, the, the roots, you don't want to mix the root vegetables with the the fruit. Uh, you want to you want to keep them separate as well. So so you would mix say the the radish uh, with the with the red bell pepper. Okay. You would mix the uh, the banana with the apple. They're both hanging from the tree. They're not growing in the ground. There is a vibrational difference between the two, and and I will suggest that uh, that people uh, not mix uh, the fruits and and the vegetables. Uh, but you have to also know what is a fruit and what is a vegetable. You know, a tomato is a fruit; it's not a vegetable. Okay, we just call it a vegetable <laughs> because because that's what we want to call it. Whether it is or that, we could call it an insect. And that's what we would call it because we want to call it that, not because that's what it is. Um, with uh, with those combinations, you know, you can add the uh, some of the spices that you saw in the turmeric drink. Uh, you can also keep it as bland as possible, like what I showed you with uh, the different types of, of lettuces uh, mixed with the carrot juice. Okay, uh, some folks have told want to mix the spinach with the carrot juice and and I and I'll you know I'll, I'll abjure to their experience with that I haven't had a bad experience with it uh, but the what I buy or was buying was a, a mixture of young baby lettuces that I would put in with the uh, with the orange juice into a blender as I'm as I've been suggesting to you Julie uh, and uh, and I would blend that up but the sweetness of the carrot juice uh, counterbalances the bitterness of the lettuce, and and that is a really good combination. That is a really good because you get your bitter and your sweet at the same time in a in a very nutritious uh, and and almost pre digested format. If any of the blending that that people will do uh, is is definitely aiding the digestion process for the person. Uh, so there's there's a couple of recipes right there. Uh, just make those separations between the meat and the starch, and then the fruit and the veggies. The fruits and okay. the veggies. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. It's so nice to hear your voice, Julie. <laughs> Thank you. It's a let's, pleasure to let's be do here. Another, let's do another Skype soon, okay? We will do that. Yeah, yeah, and and if you can use aloe vera on his lip, uh, in yes. addition to some uh, vitamin C, D natural to separate vitamin C, uh, I don't see that he must have a scar there at all. I I really I don't see it. Okay. Um, I, I don't see there being one much of one. If there is, I think it will go away pretty quickly. I think, so. and if not, well, there's a mustache, right? <laughs> he's he's happy with his band aid mustache right now, so <laughs> <laughs> he's a good guy. Okay. Nice to talk with you, Julie. Thank you for calling it was in. Great great to be here, you bet. Thank you. And if anybody else would like to call in, the number is three four seven nine nine three four oh oh let me take it back, take it back. The uh guest call in number is three four seven nine three four zero zero two six. I have eighteen minutes left. So if you have a question about uh, your diet or about foods that are appropriate to your kundalini or your kundalini process in general, feel free to call that number. Um, when we travel, it is very, very difficult to find the appropriate food for us to eat within a kundalini context. I just want you to understand that 
Your kundalini knows where you're going, what you're doing, and how you're doing what you're doing. And so don't worry too much. It knows that you're traveling. It knows that. And it will make whatever it will make whatever resources that are the best for you available to you as you as you travel through. So for instance, you'll be you'll be compelled to to go to a certain restaurant or a certain store to buy a certain thing, and that will be what what it is you're going to eat. You can also prepack uh, foods that you know will be helpful to you, like on the airplane. If you're going to be on an airplane, or if you're going to be on an extended road trip, uh, Rosemary and I, you know, we've gone up to Mount Shasta from Santa Rosa and back. That's uh, the road trip. That's ten hours in a car, and then down to Yosemite, you know, that's nine hours in a car, and so. Instead of stopping off at uh, or, or eating gas station food, which sometimes we have to do, uh, you can have your own prepacked uh, organic apples, carrots, uh, tomatoes, whatever it is you like to eat. You can take that with you, and I would suggest that you do that. I'm being given to speak on dried foods right now, and anything that is dried using uh, sulfur... Uh, like dried apricots, they use sulfur as part of the the drying process, and I would suggest that you not partake of those. Uh, as I mentioned before, with the beef jerkies, the sodium nitrites, uh, you want to avoid those. Um, let's see what else I'm being shown here. Broccolis and spinach, very, very good. You can mix the broccolis with the spinach, with the cauliflower, with the string beans, with the, uh, I mean, you can really go to town. And then you can melt cheese on top of that because that's of the dairy and that floats over. And it's a very, very nutritious and a very good meal. And and uh, because it's so good and it's so nutritious, you may want to partake of more than you should. But remember to try to cut your current amounts in half. At least cut it down. Cut it down. Well, as I'm not receiving any more phone calls, I want to thank everybody who is in the chat room. Hello, everyone. I would like to thank everyone who is listening uh, in the archives, you future people out there. Hello and welcome to this. I would like to thank Glenn Ola for the, the creation and the management of the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1.com website. Uh, if any of you would like to see the videos, I am putting new videos up, and they are at Chrisom. Uh, the number zero kundalini to me when I <laughs> when I made that account it looked like chrism o kundalini so I, I like that and we have about uh, 278 or so uh, vid videos there for you to partake of uh, if you wish to there's uh, Facebook groups kundalini awakening exclamation point kundalini awakening systems one which is a private group. Uh, and uh, we have Kundalini Healing all on Facebook. On Yahoo, we have a Kundalini Healing Group on Yahoo and Kundalini Awakening System 1 at yahoogroups.com. And I believe we also have Google+. Plus. We have the Kundalini Awakening Systems 1 group on Google+. Plus. So we are out there, ladies and gentlemen. We are out there, and we are having the Kundalini and... What a blessing it would be for you, too, to partake of this amazing, beautiful evolutionary energy at the base of your spine and at the, the middle of your heart. Thank you all for listening.